Hello class. Today we will be discussing time management. A common approach project managers take when scheduling project activities is what I refer to as a calendar approach. The project managers begin the calendar approach by assigning dates to activities. When this approach may work, the number of projects that run into scheduling problems would indicate otherwise. The pin box subscribes to another approach. Before dates are assigned to an activity, the project manager defines sequences and estimates resources and durations of the activities. This approach provides the project manager with a broader perspective and more knowledge of the activities and the constraints affecting the activities. This lecture will demonstrate the application of these processes using an office relocation project. Once the project charter has been approved, the organizing and preparing stage begins. The project manager is now ready to apply the scope management processes, collect requirements, define scope, and create WBS. During the starting stage of the project, the project manager applied similar processes to develop the project charter. During the organizing and preparing stage of the project, the project manager further defines and adds details to the charter and eventually produces the project management plan. The project manager begins by collecting requirements or more information and details pertaining to the project scope. The tools and techniques used by project managers to collect requirements of the project include interviewing stakeholders, brainstorming, panel discussions, focus groups, and surveys. The project manager then analyzes the requirements of the project and defines scope by developing a project scope statement. The project scope, the project scope statement is an input into the project management plan. The project manager will continue to define and refine the project scope throughout the planning processes as, and into the execution processes. The WBS in this slide represents a completed WBS for demonstration purposes only. The example office relocation project involves moving an office from Boston to Florida. The new facility in Florida will be fitted out with new furniture, FF&E, computers, network equipment, and telephones. The project manager will prepare an RFP to purchase the FF&E and hire a moving company. During the process, the fine activities, Tasks in the WBS are further decomposed to individual deliverables. In addition to modifying the WBS, the project manager provides a written description of each activity. In our example here, we've decomposed RFP. RFP consists of the following tasks, and the project manager will define all these tasks. For instance, bidders conference. The PM will conduct a meeting on site with potential bidders to review the specifications and the requirements of the RFP. The next process, sequence activities, is executed by identifying the task dependencies. What tasks must be performed before this task can be performed? MS Project refers to dependencies as predecessors. The project manager begins the RFP process after the project charter is approved as indicated by the two in the predecessor predecessor column of the task prepare RFP. Tasks can have more than one dependency as illustrated with the task issue addenda. The project manager cannot issue addenda until the task Bidders Conference Boston and Bidders Conference Florida have been completed. Tasks often have interrelated dependencies. Computers cannot be installed until the network is installed. The network cannot be installed until the wiring is installed. The wiring cannot be installed until the furniture is installed. The task pack in Boston has multiple dependencies. Award contract, install furniture, install network, install telephones. Two important concepts to consider when determining dependencies or predecessors. One, apply dependencies to the lowest level task only. Notice only the tasks at the lowest level of the hierarchy have predecessors assigned to them. The task inherent dependencies from other tasks do not list dependencies that are inherited. For instance, before the task installs computers can be performed, install wiring and install network must be completed. 
the WBS indicated installed computers has a dependency of installed network, but not installed wiring. Installed wiring is a dependency of installed network and is inherited by install computers through this dependency. Notice in this task, uh, in this Gantt chart, that all the interrelated dependencies are shown via these lines and that the project dates begin to fill in. I hopefully this chart illustrates the benefits of sequencing activities prior to scheduling activity dates. The next process, estimate activity resources, is fairly straightforward. The project manager estimates what resources will be required to complete the activities. The project manager may not know what specific resources are available, but can assign a skill set to the activity. The project manager in this example is preparing an RFP to procure FF&E and the services of a moving vendor. The resource is indicated on the WBS by the general terms furniture vendor and moving vendor. Take a minute to reflect on the iterative nature of planning. You have to prepare an RFP, but at this point do not know when the services of the vendors are required. You must complete the schedule first. However, the schedule will not be accurate without identifying when the resources are available. Both the RFP and the schedule will go through several iterations before either will be accurate. MS Project is capable of displaying durations in hours or days. I prefer to assign a minimum of one day to activities during this process. One day is also the default for Microsoft Project. The process Estimate Activity Durations is completed with the assistance of input from the assigned resources. Activity resources will have historical data to assist them in estimating activity durations. In the case of more complex estimating techniques, the resources will have the expertise to perform such estimates. The project manager has assigned internal resources to the computer and network activities and has a relationship with the resource performing the telephone activities. The moving vendor and furniture vendor have not been identified. In the case of these two resources, the project manager must rely on contacts in his or her network. Having experience in similar projects is an advantage in this situation. Lacking specific experience, the project manager must have the ability to reach out to vendors and expand their network of contacts. The RFI, or Request for Information, is one tool a project manager can employ to gather information on vendors' availability, pricing, and activity duration. An, inter an internet search and several telephone calls could also produce the same results. Notice that the timeline of the project has expanded through each process. The project manager is now ready for the next process, develop schedule. The first step in developing a schedule is to apply leads and lags. Leads and lags are time constraints that take place in between activities. In our example project, the project manager conducted two bid conferences. After the bid conference, the potential vendors will start to prepare their responses to the RFP. During the preparation of the responses, the vendors typically request information and clarification from the project manager regarding their RFP. Project managers typically respond to all vendors with a document called an addenda. In our example project, the project manager will issue an addenda four days after the Boston bid conference and three days after the Florida bid conference. The addenda lags the bidders conferences by three and four days respectively. Another example of a lag would be the task Pour Concrete. Concrete must cure for two days before the next task can be performed, hence a two-day lag. A lead, on the other hand, is a time constraint before a task. In our example project, the project manager must fly from Boston to Florida to attend the bid conference. In, a, in order to attend the bid conference, the project manager must fly to Florida one day 
before the conference. After the leads and lags are applied, the project schedule reflects all the estimated durations, activity constraints, and time constraints known to the project manager. The project manager must now account for deadlines and resource constraints. Deadline constraints are dates imposed by project conditions. In our school example, excuse me, an example would be a school that must accept a furniture delivery during the summer months. Another, con another deadline constraint would be a car manufacturer has to get a new plant online in three months to meet the demand for their new car orders. Or a homeowner needs to complete a housing project in six months before the winter weather sets in. Project managers must now enter in any deadline imposed by the project conditions. The project manager for the office relocation project discovered the furniture manufacturer will be on a holiday shutdown on the projected order date of the furniture. The manufacturer will not ship any orders for the week after Christmas and will delay all orders by five days after they receive them. The project manager also discovered the opening date of the new office can be moved to Monday, February 7th. An examination of the schedule reveals the task relocation will not be completed until the 9th. Before the project manager tries to adjust the schedule to accommodate the deadlines, he or she will examine any resource constraints. The tasks, install wiring and racks, and install telephone gear, have an estimated duration of 4 days and 1 day respectively. The durations were estimated using a typical crew size of four. The telephone vendor only has a three-man crew available to travel to Florida on the estimated dates. Thus, the tasks have a revised duration of five days and 1.25 days for a total of 6.25 days. The telephone vendor would have to round up to seven days for a total of 168 man hours. Alternatively, if the telephone vendor worked 10 hours a day, the work could be completed in 5 days for a total of 180 paid man hours accounting for overtime. The extra 12 man hours cost the PM $840 and results in no change to the installed telephone timeline. A good option, but the project is still slightly past the deadline. The project manager investigates the cost to expedite the furniture delivery. The shipping vendor offers to deliver the furniture in five days for an upcharge of $1,200. The addition of six days allows the project manager to meet the open office deadline and avoid the additional costs required to expedite install telephone tasks. This is just one example of the issues and possible solutions a project manager faces when developing a project schedule. The next lecture will address the interrelationship of time, budget, and scope, and two tools available to the project manager when developing a schedule, crashing and fast tracking. And actually, the, uh, the two examples we just gave were examples of crashing and fast tracking. In conclusion, time management involves Define activities, decomposing tasks, and describing the deliverables. Sequence activities, identifying activity constraints. Estimate activity resources, assigning resources to complete the tasks. Estimate activity durations, estimating how much time it takes to complete a task. Develop schedule, apply leads and lags, crashing and fast tracking, manually scheduling dates, and manpower leveling.